electric motor and generator. We have seen that the transformer is used to change the voltage of the alternating current only. Do you have any idea of alternating current? Generally, electric current from a battery or a cell is generated through a chemical reaction that triggers a movement of electrons in one direction inside the conductor and the direction opposite to the flow of electrons gives the direction of current. When the current through a closed circuit flows in the same direction, it is called direct current. We know that the magnitude of electric current is the rate of flow of charge. So the change in this rate changes the magnitude of the current. Electric current due to flow of charges in one direction with a constant rate is called steady direct current. On the other hand, electric current due to flow of charges in one direction with a varying rate is called varying direct current or pulsating direct current. We also know that due to the relative motion of a magnet and a coil of conducting wire, electric current is induced in the coil. In this situation, induced current is generated due to back and forth movement of electrons, alternatively by the north and the south poles of the magnet. And the direction of current continuously changes after a regular interval of time. When the current continuously changes its direction after a regular interval of time and whose magnitude also varies after a regular interval of time, it is called alternating current. Until 1880, direct current was used for electrical power distribution. But now, alternating current is being used for electrical power distribution. Do you know why? Each battery is designed to produce only a single voltage and the direct current generated by a battery cannot travel large distances as the power is lost to heat during transmission. But, AC can be transmitted to long distances as not too much of the power is lost to heat during its transmission. In most of the machines that generates rotational motion such as electric fans, washing machines, etc., a motor is used. It is a rotating device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. However, electric motors are operated by direct current as well as alternating current. But here, we will discuss the motor which is operated by direct current sources such as a cell or a battery. When a current carrying conductor is placed in a uniform external magnetic field in a direction other than the direction of the magnetic field, it experiences a magnetic force. The same principle is used in a motor. When a rectangular coil carrying current is placed in a magnetic field, a torque acts on the coil which rotates it continuously. When the coil rotates, the shaft attached to it also rotates and thus it is able to do mechanical work. An electric motor consists of a rectangular or circular coil of insulated copper wire wound on a soft iron core which is called armature of the motor. The soft iron core is used to increase the magnetic flux. 
the coil is mounted between the two poles of a magnetic field such that its arms remain perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. It should be mounted in such a way that it can rotate freely. The ends of the coil are connected to the two split rings of a commutator. The commutator is a copper ring split into two halves. The inner sides of these split rings are insulated and attached to an axle called shaft of the motor. When the coil rotates, the split rings also rotate. On the other hand, the external conducting edges of these split rings touch two conducting stationary carbon brushes. Battery terminals are connected to the brushes so that the current can pass through the coil. The function of the commutator is to reverse the direction of the current. Here, current is flowing through the coil in anti-clockwise direction. When the current flows through the coil, a magnetic field is generated around the armature. It can be noticed that the current in opposite arms of the coil are in opposite direction. On applying Fleming's left hand rule, it can be seen that the force acting on the left arm pushes it upwards while the force acting on the right arm pushes it downward. Thereby, the coil and the axle rotate in clockwise direction. When the coil turns through 90 degree, the brushes lose contact with the commutator and the current stops flowing through the coil. However, the coil keeps turning because of its own momentum. When the coil completes its half rotation, its sides get interchanged and thereby the contact with the carbon brushes also gets interchanged. Therefore, the current in the coil as well as the direction of force acting on the two arms also gets reversed. And the arm that was earlier pushed up is now pushed down. And the arm that was earlier pushed down is now pushed up. This way, the coil completes its rotation in the same direction. The reversing of the current is repeated at each half rotation that gives rise to a continuous rotation of the coil and to the axle. The efficiency of a motor can be increased by increasing the number of turns in the coil, increasing the strength of the current, increasing the area of cross-section of the coil, increasing the strength of the magnetic field. Let us make a motor. Take a 1.5 volt torch battery, 1 meter of insulated copper wire used for motor rewinding, 1 magnet, 2 metal file clips, 2 1 cm wide rubber bands cut from an old bicycle tube, some thread and ordinary hand tools. Wind the copper wire tightly on the torch battery. The loops of the wire should be adjacent to one another and not overlap. The coil should have at least 10 turns. When the coil is removed from the battery, it opens up like a spring. Tie the coil in several places with little bits of string to keep the loops of coil in place. The two ends of the coil should be diametrically outwards. The coil will rotate on these two ends. Now scrape the enamel from the end leads so that it remains only on the bottom. This copper or enamel sequence leads to make break of the circuit. Take the two metal file clips and hammer a hole in each piece near one end. 
hammer one more hole in one piece about 2.5 cm from the other end. Take the old radio speaker magnet and place it on the battery with the help of the cycle tube rubber band. Stretch out another cycle tube rubber along the length of the battery. Now insert the stuff pins in the rubber band. The pin with two holes is placed next to the flat end of the battery. The second hole bites into the plain end of the battery and makes a good electrical contact. Now, pull the metal strips a little apart and slip the motor coils in their holes. Give the coil a gentle starting push and it will start rotating. Have you seen a dynamo fitted onto a bicycle to provide electricity to its headlight? When a dynamo is attached to the tire of a bicycle, a knob at the top of the dynamo touches against the rim of the tire, which rotates when the bicycle is moving. The electrical energy produced by the dynamo depends upon the speed of rotation of the knob. The faster the knob rotates, more is the electrical energy output. In general, a dynamo is a simple electric generator that is used to generate electricity. In an electric generator, mechanical energy is used to rotate a conductor in a magnetic field to produce electricity. Based on the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction, an electric generator is used to produce large currents for use in homes and industry. Similar to a motor, it consists of a rotating rectangular coil of insulated copper wire called armature, which is placed between the two poles of a permanent magnet. The two ends of the coil are connected to the two split rings of a commutator. The inner sides of these split rings are insulated and attached to an axle called shaft of the generator. The external conducting edges of these split rings touch two conducting stationary carbon brushes. Those are connected to the electrical appliances so that the current can pass through them. When the coil rotates in clockwise direction, the force acting on the left arm is in upward direction, while on the right arm it is acting in downward direction. When the coil rotates in a magnetic field, the current is generated in the coil. On applying Fleming's right hand rule, it can be seen that the current through the coil flows in clockwise direction and the brush on the right side behaves like a positive terminal while that on the left side behaves like a negative terminal of the generator. When the coil completes its half rotation, its sides get interchanged and thereby the contact with the carbon brushes also gets interchanged. But the direction of current in the outer circuit remains the same. Thereby, the two brushes always behave in the same manner and we get direct current from the generator. On a large scale, electricity is generated in the form of alternating current. The main difference between the AC and DC generators is their slip rings. In DC generator, two split rings are used, whereas in AC generator, two full slip rings are used. Similar to a DC generator, it also consists of an armature which is placed between the two poles of a strong magnet. Two ends of the armature are connected to the two slip rings separately. The external conducting edges of the slip rings 
touch two flexible metallic brushes. When the call rotates in clockwise direction, the force acting on the left arm is in upward direction, while on the right arm it is acting in downward direction. On applying Fleming's right hand rule, the direction of current through the coil comes out to be in clockwise direction and the brush on the right side behaves like a positive terminal while that on the left side behaves like a negative terminal of the generator. When the coil completes its half rotation, its sides get interchanged and thereby the contact with the carbon brushes also gets interchanged and thereby the direction of current in the coil also gets interchanged. Thereby, the two brushes interchange their polarity. That is, the brush which was positive in the first half cycle becomes negative in the next half cycle and vice versa. Hence, the current changes its direction two times in each revolution and we get alternating current from the generator. Most commonly, it changes direction 100 times per second. You can find AC is used predominantly across the world in higher power applications because with AC it is possible to build electric generators, motors and power distribution systems that are far more efficient than DC. Household Electric Circuit All of us must have seen big electricity poles, transformers, wires, etc. Electricity is produced far away from cities at electricity generation centers and transmitted to consumers. Power stations supply alternating current through high tension wires to the substations. In order to transport this energy over large distances, step-up transformers are used that step up the voltage from say 11 kV to 132 kV and reduce the current flow in the same proportion. The purpose of transmission of electricity of low current is to reduce the power loss occurring during the transmission. At the substations, before the electrical energy is distributed, a step-down transformer is used and the voltage is stepped down to 3.3 kV. From the substation, it is transmitted to the branch substation where the voltage is further stepped down to 240 volt and 50 hertz. Here, hertz is the unit of frequency of the alternating current. It indicates AC completes 50 cycles per second. In other words, current through the electrical wires, bulbs, and other electrical appliances flows 50 times in one direction while 50 times in the other. One can say that a bulb lights up 100 times and goes out 100 times in one second. But due to the lack of perception of such a small interval of time, it appears to glow constantly. Generally, power from a substation is distributed to the consumers through distributors, sub-distributors using a ring system. In this system, when any of the sub-distributor 
or consumer is disconnected, it still distributes the power to all the other consumers. In general, electrical energy is distributed on three phase lines. However, for the domestic purpose, a single phase line of lower voltage is required. From the poles, generally two wires come to our electric meter box. Between these, one wire is called phase as it carries electric current and the other is called neutral wire as it provides the return path. Voltage in the phase wire is 220 volts, whereas in the neutral wire it is 0 volts, which is the same as that of the earth. Generally, in the main line there is one more wire which is connected to the earth. Thereby, it is called earth wire or earth connecting wire. The earth wire is usually connected to a metal plate deep in the earth near the house or a substation. This is used for earthing high power appliances, especially for those appliances that have a metallic body, such as electric press, toaster, table fan, refrigerator, etc. In the meter box, a main fuse is also connected in series with the live wire. Wires from the electric meter are connected to the main switch. Function of the main switch is to switch the whole power in one throw. Inside a house, wiring can be done either in a series or in a parallel mode, but it is preferred in parallel mode. Do you know why? In a series circuit, the current remains constant and the potential difference remains constant in the parallel circuit. Let us see what happens if the load is increased in both types of circuits. In series combination, all pulses are connected one after the other along a single path. On increasing the number of bulbs in a series circuit, the brightness of each bulb reduces because of the decrease in the strength of the current. And if one of the bulbs fuses, all of them stop glowing. Whereas, in parallel combination, all the bulbs are connected in two or more branches and each branch represents an individual circuit. On increasing the number of bulbs in the circuit, the brightness of each bulb remains the same because each bulb gets the same voltage and there is no effect on the strength of the current. Furthermore, even if one of them fuses, the others continue to glow. In the domestic setup, the electric power is provided to the various appliances that are connected in a parallel combination, so that each appliance is able to draw its required amount of current and is subjected to the same voltage supplied by the mains. In this type of connection, each device can be switched on or off independently. Generally, two separate circuits are used in the domestic setup. One for appliances with higher power ratings such as geysers, air coolers, etc which is rated as 15 ampere current circuit and the other circuit is for bulbs, fans, etc. which is rated as 5 ampere current circuit.
Let us see a simple circuit for a single phase wiring system in a house. The main components of a typical electrical wiring are the main fuse, main switch, fuses, live wire, neutral wire, earth wire, crocodile pins, and of course a load. This load can be a bulb or an appliance. This is a simple circuit diagram for a single phase wiring system. When an object is rubbed with the surface of another, some electrons get transferred from one body to another. The body that gains electrons becomes negatively charged and the one that loses electrons becomes positively charged. This process of charging is called charging by friction. As here, a rubber balloon is rubbed with a woolen garment and becomes positively charged. The woolen garment is left with a negative charge because some electrons are transferred from the balloon to the woolen garment. Elect on the basis of the properties of charges, one can charge the other conductor. Let's see how. When a positively charged comb is brought near the metal disc, the gold leaves diverge. That again shows the charging of the two leaves. In this method, charge is not transferred from the comb to the metal disc. But the electrons of the conducting rod attract towards the comb. This way, the metal disc gains the electrons and thereby acquires a negative charge. On the other hand, the coal leaves have the deficiency of the electrons. That is, both the leaves acquire positive charge. This method of charging is referred to as charging by induction. All of us must have seen big electricity poles, transformers, wires, etc. Electricity is produced far away from cities at electricity generation centers and transmitted to consumers. The most common natural phenomenon related to charges is the thunderbolts of lightning across the sky during the rains. Clouds in the lower region of the atmosphere get negatively charged as they are blown by wind. When a heavily charged cloud comes close to any other object like ground or a building, there may be a strong spark of lightning. As a result, huge amount of negative charges jump to the oppositely charged ground or the building. On the other hand, clouds in the upper region get positive charge. When a heavily charged cloud comes close to another cloud, there may be a strong spark of lightning as a huge amount of negative charges jump to the oppositely charged cloud. In both the cases, lightning is due to the strong attractive force between opposite charges. As a safety measure, tall buildings are installed with lightning conductors. These are long and thick metal rods whose split upper ends are sharp, pointed and the lower end is attached to a large metal plate buried deep under the earth. When lightning strike a building, having a lightning conductor, the flow of charges is quickly carried to the lower end of the conductor under the earth and is distributed 
to the immediate surroundings. Do you know that the passengers on ships, especially on oil tankers, are provided with metal plated shoes? When a person walks on the deck of a ship, the soles of his shoes develop a charge on them due to friction. As he walks, an opposite charge is induced on the deck and sparks of charged particles that flow in a definite direction through a conductor constitute the electric current. The electric current occurs naturally in many situations, such as the case of lightning. Charges flow from the clouds to the earth through the atmosphere, causing an electric current called transient current. The transient current ceases when the flow of the charges stops. In general, rate of flow of charge passing through a given point in a conductor is called electric current. If charge Q passes through a fixed point of the conductor in time t, then the magnitude of the current flowing through the conductor is the ratio of the charge and time. Its SI unit is ampere, named after French physicist Andre Murray Ampere. One ampere of current can be defined as when one coulomb of charge passes through a cross section of a conductor in one second, the current passes through it is called one ampere. As a matter of convention, the direction of flow of positive charge gives the direction of current. This is called conventional current. While the direction of flow of electrons gives the direction of electronic current, the direction of electronic current is opposite to the direction of conventional current. Let's try a numerical problem. Before working with electricity, one must ensure whether it is AC or DC current. Low frequency AC is more dangerous than high frequency AC and DC has zero frequency thereby DC is more dangerous than the AC of the same voltage. Generally AC throws a person away while one gets stuck to a DC source. Electricity should be used in a careful and safe manner. Electrical safety is one of the most important requirements in our daily life. If we use it carelessly, it can deliver deadly shocks and injuries or even death. There are some practical safety measures which are expected to be followed by every user. One should never operate an electric switch or appliance with wet hands. While using electrical appliances in bathroom, never operate the switches while standing barefoot on a wet floor because wet persons have a lower body resistance and so they can be fatally electrocuted at lower voltages. The main switch should be switched off in case of any accident. One must separate a person who has received a current shock with the help of a safe non-conductor such as rubber, wood, etc. Never touch such a person directly. Never use water to extinguish fire caused due to electrical spark. Always ensure that a main supply is switched off before working on electric circuits. Use rubber gloves, shoes and separator device when it is necessary to work on live circuit.
In household wiring, always use good quality wires of proper thickness and insulation. Connector should be tight and joint should be covered with insulating tapes. Ensure that a MCB or a fuse of appropriate load capacity and earthing is present.